another episode of The Reality Is. As always, it's Noor, and I'm here with my brother, Raheel, to talk about what's happening. Hi, hello. Why do you wait so long to unmute yourself? Because then it sounds like I'm just by myself. Uh, that's the feeling that I want you to have. I want you to feel like you are alone in this world. Okay. Because I like seeing your reaction. Okay. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Would you uh, rather I breathe loudly over the microphone like Tony Soprano? Because that's what you're going to get. You just want me to turn it <laughs> off? Can you just be faster with your unmuting? Can you do that? I have uh, um, slow fingers. It's actually something serious that I've discovered is I think my fingers are slowing down. Um, because I have a 21 character password um, for my work <laughs> laptop and I keep entering it wrong. And you know what's sad is now I have to hit like the little eye icon so I can see like the letters that I'm typing and I have to do it one by one. Do you use like finger taps? Like you go one by, are you, are you still using QWERTY or are you like using I'm, one? I am still using QWERTY. It hasn't, it hasn't gotten to that yet, but it will. I do have to do the finger taps, obviously, when I'm typing in my uh, email, you know, when I'm like uh, checking out or something. Have you ever type in your email for anything like that? Or do you just say, no, I'm not <laughs> I have no idea. Checking out where? What are you saying? You know, when you're like checking out, I like quick check or something and they're like, hey, are you a quick check member? And you're like, no. And they're like, oh, there are these points. And you're like, no. oh, okay, let me sign up. No, I don't do so that. No. I sign up for everything and then I forget that I've signed up and then I never use it. It's oh, a whole okay. waste of time. Wonderful. No, I never put in my email address. And if it doesn't have like an automatic at Gmail option to fill in, yeah, that's the worst. absolutely not. Yeah, We're not worst. doing that. You have to add Mm-mm. and then you have to, yeah, no. No, no, thank you. I put it in. Okay, well, good for you. Good for a quick check. Hey, there's a new quick check actually now on uh, in our neighborhood and not in our neighborhood. It's like 10 minutes away. And I'm, this makes me sound like an old person. The gas is shockingly low. Yeah, no, Quick Check and Wawa both have the, the like the cheapest gas in the area. They always match the, the, the cheapest gas in the area. I didn't know this. Why do you think I'm so devoted? You think I'm just because <laughs> because I don't know. You do other activities in those areas, so I don't know what else you're doing at Wawa Ch- Quick Check. And you're making it sound like I'm I'm giving out BJ's in the parking lot. What we've said it many times, sex work is work, so I don't mind any of that. <laughs> Anyway, um, you know, you asked me what I wanted to talk about today, and I think we mm-hmm. just need to catch up on things that have been going on. All right. Sure. <laughs> okay. Okay. First of all, we want to say we were on a podcast. You and I were on a podcast. Shocking. You were actually invited. They didn't even That's want true. just me. They were like, we want you and your brother, Raheel, <laughs> yes. which is crazy because that Cause honestly, because why? I, cause why? And yeah. oh, real, by the way, before I even do that, somebody left us an Apple iTunes review or left me really, but I guess it's for you too. I have to read it to you because um, I was shocked. They said, to be honest, I don't watch Bravos. I use the Bravo episode recaps. Sorry, the, the Bravo recap episodes to help me fall asleep. ASMR for me, add money for you. <laughs> but I love the episodes with Raheel and I'm thankful that you also discuss current events. I listen to these intently. Ah, you know what? That's my policy also. I also use the Bravo episodes to fall asleep. Do you? No. I never oh. listen to it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Never mind. Um, anyway, we were on a podcast called Wise and Wine Podcast. They have, um, I, I think, like a version of their podcast called Siblings Take On. And it's with Jennifer and Jared and their brother and sister. And they were really fun to talk to. We talked to them off ca- off mic for like an hour before we even recorded with them. They were wonderful. So you're muted, buddy. Come on. Son of a bitch. <laughs> I was saying, they're just the loveliest people. Just so nice. It, it was a nice glimpse uh, into what a sibling relationship is like when the siblings actually like each other and aren't trying to undercut each other at every, at every turn. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, it was really awesome. Uh, they're really nice people. I had a great time on that podcast. Um, I reached out to Jen. It's Jen mm-hmm. with Jets, um, on LinkedIn because I'm mm-hmm. not on any social media. Um, <laughs> Except for LinkedIn. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I sent her a note and of course she didn't reply back because nobody checks LinkedIn. Nobody should. But yeah. Jen, if you were listening, I did reach out. 
Okay. Well, you didn't try to connect with Jared? I couldn't find him. I don't know oh. if I, looked. I just looked for their podcast, and their podcast has a LinkedIn page. So I was like, oh. all right, let me just type. Yeah. Nice. And then I sent Should... her an article for 10 tips to work with your coworkers. <laughs> <laughs> Should our podcast have a LinkedIn page? Uh, I don't know. Have you, when's the last time you used LinkedIn? Are you on LinkedIn? I am on LinkedIn. Um, when's the last time I used it? I haven't. I'm I think... supposed to use it. I'm supposed to use it for my job, and I never do. Just never. Yeah, I, I, uh, I'm not going to lie. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I would do with that. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I, I've never gotten, like, a job off of LinkedIn. Like, I know people, like, network on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. And I even get, like, LinkedIn notifications, like, once every six months being, like, 12 people are waiting for you to respond to their uh, (laughs) friend requests or whatever that is. But I think the funniest thing is, like, when people post, like, I don't know, maybe I'm just being an asshole because I'm, like, a jerky millennial. But when, like, people use LinkedIn, like, Facebook, I'm like, what are you doing? Well, but the thing is, that is exactly how people use it. But then, you know. For anybody that's uh, younger than a millennial, they're like, why the fuck are you using Facebook like that? Why are you using Facebook, first of all? You know? Yeah, yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, I know. People love to share, like, articles on LinkedIn and stuff like that. And, you know, God bless you if you do that. Does Does anyone read articles about, like, work? Like, and how to be better at your job? Like, I, like, like those work self-help articles. Does anyone even read them? I bet they do. I mean, that uh, seems to be the main thing that people share. And then sometimes people share like their thoughts and stuff about the world. Um, so not me, though. Not me. Absolutely nope. not. Nope, nope. Also, we have a listener named Crystal who I wanted to give a, a, a shout out to and mm-hmm. thoughts and prayers to her. Crystal, a dedicated listener, mm-hmm. listens to these episodes, too. Shocking. Okay. Who wants to listen to you? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Sweet Crystal was on her bike. This is actually, this happened soon after you and I had been talking about the bikes of Amsterdam and how I was like, bikes are so rude. (laughs) Sweet Crystal was riding her bike and she got hit by a fucking car that ran a red light. Oh my God. I know. And she got hurt really bad. So I'm going to put a GoFundMe for Crystal in our, um, in the description of this episode. Guys, it's Christmas time, holiday season. Last night of Hanukkah. Um, please donate to that if you can. But also, Crystal, I hope you feel better. And I hope that the person that hit you makes you very wealthy. It's yeah. your money and you need it now. <laughs> GG okay. Wentworth. G- G- yeah, 8775 now. <laughs> Isn't that it? <laughs> I don't know. Why don't you open up that window behind you and just scream, it's your money and you need it now. <laughs> No, jokes um, aside, she jokes better aside. be re- really, first of all, I hope you're healthy. I hope you're okay. Yes. I hope that nothing is like broken forever. I hope that you're physically fit. And besides the trauma of the experience, which you get good therapy and medication for, I hope everything I, everything is good. But okay. also, I hope you're rich after this. <laughs> Wait, how'd you find out that she got hit by a, a, a car? She told me. Oh, yeah. So, you know, that tells me, hopefully, that tells me that she's in good spirits because yeah. you are pretty low on the totem pole, I think. I would hope <laughs> for Crystal. I hope Crystal has other people that she's sharing this news with <laughs> because I think for me, you'd be like eighth on the list. I'd get to you eventually. <laughs> Do we know uh... what Crystal was doing at the time other than riding her bike? Was she listening to music? I mean, I don't want... <laughs> I, I don't want to sabotage your case or anything like that if she has one going on. <laughs> Let's not talk about that on mic because what if they use it against her? That's <laughs> like true. Like you were listening to what podcast? They talk about Palestine? Well, not only yeah. do not get money, <laughs> you're also canceled uh, now. Um, so, yeah, I hope Crystal's okay. So if you yeah, can thoughts and prayers. That, thoughts and that, prayers. Please. Thoughts and prayers. Anything we can do. Yeah. Um, you were like, hey, what do you want to talk about today? And I was like, Jen Cha. And you were like, I'd really rather not. Yeah, I went. <laughs> I looked at, I honestly, I looked at that and I was like, oh, fuck. It's just Isn't so she in silly. prison? Yes. Isn't she in prison? Should, should that not be the end of the story? Why no, must we have a follow up? Because <laughs> I have to tell you what this headline is. It's from a couple of weeks ago <laughs> and it's so ridiculous. Okay. And I have to tell you. Here's the headline. Jen Shaw is helping Theranos fraudster Elizabeth Holmes tone her abs behind bars. That's a lovely story. I'm happy for both of them. Where do we go from here? 
<laughs> is Jen Sha a fitness person? No. Yeah. But Bravo star turned jailbird Jen Sha is influencing ladies behind bars, including helping Theranos fraudster Elizabeth Holmes tone her abs. Now, here's the thing. Mm-hmm. Obviously, this is coming from the Jen Shaw camp because yeah. even the way that's written, it's like Theranos fraudster and Bravo star turned jailbird. Like jailbird is cute. <laughs> anyway, they're at the same uh, prison. And so I guess they've become buddies and, you know, whatever comes with that. So what do you think they connect on? Is it notoriety? That's probably it, right? Like being a bad person, being, being like yeah, publicly scamming, known as a bad person. Scamming old people also, both of them. You think you think they're 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 trading like uh secrets of like, oh, when I get out. Oh, that's a good one, Jen. I'm gonna try this next time. <laughs> or no, I think you know, like that. I think that they're both like, you know, I was just trying to do a good thing for like people and it just like didn't work out and I just got bad advice and like it's not my fault. And you know, the world is just like looking out to blame women anyway. Like I'm sure that's what they were saying, <laughs> you know, to each other. Yeah. Now that you have me thinking about this. Who approached who about the abs? Like, does Jen say, hey, Lizzie, I know we're getting along. Your abs <laughs> need some work. Let me no. help you. Or does well, Liz so go? Here's here's what the Page Six article said. Shah, 50, pleaded guilty in July 2022 for the con and was ordered to pay back $6.5 million, blah, 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 blah. But now she has reinvented as Jane Fonda. And, or no, she's she's called her, she calls herself Jen Fonda. And has come up with 30 to 60 minute ab workout class called Shamazing. I like it. So I think that she wanted to establish a, you know, a little uh, thing for herself. I mean, let's not forget when Teresa Judice was in in prison, she started doing yoga. She was like leading a yoga class. So now do you let's say Jen Sha, she comes out, she puts Uh out a fitness video. Uh-huh. Do you buy that fitness video? Do you no. follow it? First of all, you know I don't exercise. Yeah. Not interested. Uh, in other than that. just poor judgment. You do exercise poor judgment. <laughs> <laughs> the right to not shut my yapper. Okay. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, no, I, I, no, I'm not buying that. I've never bought. Also, who's buying fitness like web, like what did you say, a tape? Yeah. Fitness tapes, a VCR, VHS, a, a VHS, player, a VHS. <laughs> How about a Blu-ray? Paul C. Kim. No. Um, okay. Because I've done a couple of fitness. I followed a couple of fitness uh, videos and stuff online. I'm just trying mm-hmm. to think if if there's anything that would compel me to buy the Jen Sha fitness video. I don't think there is. No. No, I don't think so. Okay. The next thing I had on my list to talk to you about, I just wrote Taco Bell. And I'll be honest, I haven't read the story, but I remembered I wanted to talk to you about it. So I just pulled up the article. And again, I'm shocked that this is the title of the uh, the headline of the article. Ready? Yes. Raunchy alcohol-fueled Taco Bell party included open sex lawsuit claims. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, hold on. <laughs> What is open sex? And how is it different than sex? I think it's just code for orgy. No? Okay. Just public sex, I think. Public sex. Sex in the open. No, I think open sex means sex in the open, like in the parking lot. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. What 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 else is open sex? Because if you're having sex, things gotta be open. Oh, no, it goes into detail what it means. Okay. A former Los Angeles area Taco Bell employee is suing the company and franchise owner after she claims a Christmas party at the fast food restaurant descended into a drunken mess that included open sex. (laughs) In the suit, she alleges that her supervisor invited her uh, to, oh, almost exactly a year ago, to the December 18, 2022 party at the San Pedro uh, Taco Bell at which she worked. She was encouraged mm-hmm. to bring food for a potluck style buffet and her contribution was a bowl of guacamole. <laughs> Hold on. Before you go on, the party was at a Taco Bell and they had a potluck style dinner? Yeah. The food's already there. 
And why did you bring guacamole? <laughs> yeah. There's like tons of packs of guacamole. Wait, does Taco Bell offense- have guac? Yeah, it's extra. No, that's sure. Chipotle. Chipotle definitely has guac. Uh, uh, guac. Uh, Taco Bell also has guacamole because it's part of some of their uh, burritos. And the seven layer burrito definitely has guacamole in there. Okay, fine. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, once she arrived, she discovered that her supervisor covered the windows of the restaurant with wrapping paper and also covered the cameras for the lobby in the in the inside of the restaurant. Mm-hmm. She claims her supervisor provided alcohol to staffers, several of whom were overserved. And then around midnight, she stepped outside for a short time. She walked back into the restaurant and saw a coworker having sex with his wife in front of everyone at the party. Oh, what? and then yeah, and then her and the coworker's wife was the this man whose wife is having sex with somebody else. He uh the the wife no, he is having I'm saw a coworker yeah, having sex with his wife in front of everyone at the party. Okay. okay. So this man is having sex with his wife, right? And then the wife is also kissing the female manager and other coworkers oh. at the same time. <laughs> Shocked and disgusted. She ran out of the restaurant, but then she went back inside to retrieve her guacamole ball. <laughs> You know, as you were saying that sentence, I was like, I hope, I hope she is going back for her dinnerware. <laughs> yes, yeah, so she says when she went back in, only to find her manager and the other co-workers involved in the sexual encounter were vomiting. One threw up in the <sighs> trash can while the other vomited in her guacamole bowl. No. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a pretty good lawsuit. I think yeah. yes, you do. Yeah, get. yeah, yeah. So after this, she reported it to HR, and um, everybody were, uh, you know, all all the people, the manager, the coworkers involved in the whole thing were fired. Um, and but then after they were terminated, she was threatened and had her car windows shattered by somebody that was associated with the former coworkers. I mean, we're getting organized mm-hmm. crime involved now. Um. <laughs> Taco Bell and the franchisee did not do anything about these threats. Um, they just transferred her to a new location. They didn't really do anything about like the employees that were still working there that were in, that were maybe involved in the threats. Um, and yeah, so I hope that she um, she gets. I hope she money. gets paid. Yeah, I hope she definitely gets paid. Um, does lead me to ask if you were to attend an orgy at a fast food establishment. <laughs> What fast food establishment would you attend that orgy at? Well, uh, you know that the people of Chick-fil-A are having the kinkiest or- orgies. <laughs> like, just out of spite. Yeah. Um. No, here's a more important question. If you were invited to a potluck turned orgy, what snack would you bring? Do I know it's going to be an orgy? Uh, yes. Fruit roll-ups. Fruit roll-ups? <laughs> I don't know. It's the first thing that came to mind. Um, they're not very messy. I feel okay. like you can have some fun with them. Oh. Um, you can. Ra- I'm just saying, you can wrap them around a body part if you need to. Oh, you know what I mean? Um, I don't. Wrap- I don't want to know what you mean by that. Um, well, that's good. I um, wouldn't go, and I would eat the snacks at home. Well, yeah, I didn't know I had that option. You told me I am. <laughs> You're the one that forced to very happily. Orgy. You took the snacks and then you decided how to incorporate the snacks into the orgy. So it sounds to me like you're pro orgy here. I, well, I'm pro orgy always. That's <laughs> um, that's besides the point, but not with my coworkers. All right, fine. Yeah, I don't want to see Melton get down. Okay, <laughs> let me tell you something. I used to work somewhere many, many moons ago. Like one of my first jobs out of college, as you know, was at a law firm. And mm-hmm. that law firm was just filled with young people. And they would have a holiday party every year, which is just yeah. a drunken fucking mess. And they mm-hmm. would make everybody stay at the hotel um, where, near the hotel where I got married. Everybody stayed there and um, the Hilton. And then the weirdest thing was being the sober person there because obviously like I never drank back then 
And I would just like go and try to hang out with people. And like being a sober person when everybody is fucking shit faced and like horny is the That's worst so thing in the world. Like it is, it is awful. It is That's absolute so shit. Mm hmm. It's and just, everything is so gross. Like the floor is gross, and you're just like, ugh, God, everyone's sweaty and disgusting. Everyone's not nasty. Being, yeah, and then they're funny. No, and they're all just like literally googly eyed, like making out with each other, just eating each other's faces. Ugh. And then you have to go to work on Monday and pretend like you didn't see any of that. And it is yeah. so weird. Like mm -hmm. I don't want to see my coworkers behaving a certain way. That's actually why I. In the last like five, six years, I don't have any coworkers that I'm like trying to be friends. Like I don't hang out with my coworkers. I refuse mm -hmm. to do that anymore. I'm like yeah, I have enough really. friends. Yeah, you know? exactly. No, I've no. made all the friends that I need to from like a work environment. I'm still holding on to my staples friends from 20 years ago. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I have, you know, my friend Antoinette. I met her. I worked with her for four months in 2010. And I was mm -hmm. just in Amsterdam with her because I was like, yeah. this is the only friend I need. And so like. Yeah, I just, I don't, I refuse, I refuse. Another thing I wanted to update you on now, I have been sitting on this for quite some time and I didn't want to talk about it because I don't like to share things with you that make you happy or make you feel good about your choices in life oh. because I'm a jerk, okay? Yes. And also because you're going to be so fucking annoying about it, okay? Oh, so I'm we excited. talked a while ago about- Hold on, let me get some fruit roll up. I'll be right back. <laughs> We talked a while ago about like how actors, you know, we talked actually last week when we were talking about uh, Julianne and Margaret Lees mm -hmm. and how she's a, a dog shit person and nothing's actually yeah. happening to her. Right. And uh, I believe I believe Amy Schumer got a Golden Globe nomination. Did she not? Did she? I don't know. Do we care about the Golden Globes? No. And I don't know, what would she get a Golden Globe nomination for? No, I don't think she did. I think she was just on another list. Never mind. Just kidding. Anyway, mm -hmm. we talked about how actors and people who are speaking out about, you know, Palestine are getting like blacklisted or fired in some cases. And other people are just saying like the most racist shit and nothing yep. is happening to them. Mm -hmm. So, as you know, um, there was uh, Melissa Barrera. Is that her name? Yeah, the yeah. one from Scream. Yeah, so she was fired, um, but there was somebody else. So there is a, um, a, you know, the CAA, which is like one of the biggest agencies in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. One of the top agents from it, her name is Maha Dakhil. Yes. Uh, she, was she was forced to step out of her leadership roles at this agency because she posted Instagram stories in support of Palestine. I know where and this is going already. I know. I hate I you. Know. I hate yeah, that you're buddy. already so happy. Yeah, Ugh. buddy. And in a surprising turn of events. Not surprising to those who know. <laughs> not surprising to, to those that, that see the, the true form of the human being. All right. Calm down. The person who came out in support of her was one of her clients. And that client mm -hmm. is Thomas Mapather Cruz. <laughs> That's right, baby. Ethan Hunt in real life. That's what I say. <laughs> yeah. And he he took the – he went a step ahead. He even went in person to a meeting at the CAA. He went – showed up at the CAA headquarters and showed support for her and was like, absolutely not. You're not doing this to her. Like, yeah. she is amazing and this is not fair. And he shut the whole thing down. You know, it's obviously for me, it's uh, it's, a, it's a great day for me, first of all, to see you. Um, have to tell me that news um, and read it. Uh, it. That's already great. But and it's really nice because I like Tom Cruise. I like his movies. I will support Tom Cruise. And it turns out I'll support Tom Cruise in anything that that I see. Right. Um, and it's really nice. It's really nice that when I read that story, I was like, fuck, that is awesome. Like, this is the biggest star in the world. And at the very least, he has his head on straight. Like, the reason why that agent got fired was complete fucking horseshit. Like it's yeah. not, she didn't post anything remotely, you know, anti-Semitic or anything like that. Right. All she did was supported Palestinian people because she has, I believe she's Palestinian, right? She's she has, like, like, I think she has like a, yeah. She, all she wrote Arab. was she posted an Instagram uh, post and she said, what's more heartbreaking than witnessing genocide, witnessing the denial that genocide is happening, which is, yeah. Hey, reality of the situation exactly 
Yeah. The, the 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 sad thing is, I am so fucking happy about it. But this is basic human decency, and that's the point where we're at with this thing at this point, where you have to celebrate basic human decency. Like that is the right thing for Tom Cruise to do, right? Yeah. And it shouldn't require um, celebrating, but that's where we're at now. So. Yeah. Hey, speaking of the bare minimum, as mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. I've been talking to my local townspeople and my local yes, government officials. Mm-hmm. And I had a meeting with my mayor, Ooh. which was so weird. First of all, okay, somebody gave me the mayor's phone number and I thought it was like her office number because what we wanted to do was talk to the mayor about the fact that like our town hasn't said anything in support of the Palestinian community or the Muslim community. And as you know, last mm-hmm. week, the town cons- council brought an imam to do a generic prayer. And so we uh, were like, okay, like let's call her and see what we can do about the situation. And we called her and she picked up and I was like, oh man, you know how long it's been since like I called a person and like didn't leave (laughs) a voicemail for them? Like I don't like talking to people on the phone unless it's for work. Like Mm -hmm. it's weird. But anyway, we had a meeting with her and like, politicians are so interesting because she said all the right things she said Mm -hmm. all the right things but like that is what makes them politicians right like you're like oh she said all the right things it feels like she really understands us uh she was like no i'd love to work with you guys like we'll we'll figure something out let's do this event that event um all this stuff it was like really nice But it was like, and then she also was like, you guys don't know like the hatred I've been getting because some people feel like I'm not doing enough for one side and the other side feel like I'm, feels like I'm, uh, you know, even if giving you, like giving the the Palestinians, like if I give them even the slightest bit of sympathy, I get, I get so much hatred. And we're like, yeah, we like felt really bad for her. But it's like, it is weird. It is wild. It is wild that we are living in a world where like the, saying the most like obvious thing feels like we should be giving people pats on the back for and that is Mm -hmm. crazy town to me yeah um first of all when you were talking to her how did you um how did you refer to her did you call her your honor because you know that's what you're supposed to do to like the mayor yeah his honor and her honor his honor i don't think so that's how you're supposed to refer to the mayor I said mayor, her last name. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I said your highness, your royal highness. (laughs) Your liege. My liege. (laughs) I said (laughs) HRH. Well, that's really nice. It's really nice. I know that you guys have some things planned. Um, And yeah, like you said, it it is, you know, because you do see like, the tide's changing a little bit. Like, mm-hmm. you know, there's like the testimony with like the Ivy League presidents who, by the way, did themselves no favors with their testimony. Um, I understand that. But like now it's like, oh no, like they are turning anything that is remotely pro-Palestinian into just 100% pro-Hamas, right? It's like, oh, okay, you're, yeah. on the, you're on the terrorist side, right? Like that's how they're trying to take the legs out from under people, right? Um, and your husband pointed this out in our basketball group because sometimes we talk about things non-basketball and football related. Mm-hmm. But he's mm-hmm. like, you know, ultimately, these people that are leading the charge, let's say, for example, in Congress or whatever, they don't give a shit about Jewish people. Mm-hmm. It, like, look at their track record, right? All they really want to do is they want to turn people against academia because that is their ultimate goal. They don't yep. like facts. They don't like yep. science. They don't like medicine and all those things, right? Or so like books. You, or books, right? Um, or anything that kind of, um, you know, tells people that they should get along with other people. That's basically what their problem is, right? And there's like a very specific playbook that that they're following. Um, so like, for example, this lady, uh, the, the, the congresswoman who is like, who was in charge of those testimonies. Yeah. Um, her name is Elise Stef- Stefanik. Stefanik. Yeah. She's a congresswoman from New York. Um, and now she is going out there parading around like she is the biggest defender of Jewish people in Congress, right? Like that's her thing now because she held these these uh, testimonies and now people are turning up 
against the presidents or whatever. And it's like, okay, like, look at her record in her own record. Like, two years ago, somebody was running for Congress. Um, and during his campaign, this guy named Carl Palladino, he said what the GOP party needs right now is a leader like Adolf Hitler. Like, ah. that is that is what he said. He said because he was charismatic and he knew how to uh, rile the people up. You're like, yeah, you know, Hitler was riling the people up about a very specific thing. I don't know if you know what that fucking thing is. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, yeah. so people told uh, this uh, Elise Stefanik that, hey, you are, you know, you endorsed him. You should yeah. say something about that. You should rescind your endorsement. She said, nope. Ah. That is the guy that I want for Congress. She supported ah. him throughout his campaign. And now she is out there pretending to be like the person on the side of the Jewish people, right? And it's it's a little bit complicated again because, you know, if you're a Jewish person and you are seeing anti-Israel stuff and you are seeing some very real anti-Semitic stuff that is kind of mixed in, you I can understand wanting to see, you know, any sign of support and wanting to hold on to that hope or wanting to hold on to that support. I think that's kind yeah. of what we saw in June also, right? You're like, yep. you saw all of these Muslim people. They were like, oh, you know what? Oh, we got, we have, we have an option here to not go full, all, full in on this gay agenda because we've never been comfortable with it. Yeah. There's some people here that we can support. And it's like, yeah, sure. Like you want to support those people. Just look at their fucking history. It's yeah. the exact same thing. Yeah, it's the the uh, it's the tale as old as time. It's what colonialism does. It takes mm -hmm. minority groups. It's what white supremacy does. It takes minority groups. It finds this tiniest thing that they could use to pit them against each other, and then it makes them think that their proximity to white white spaces or white supremacy is going to make them safer. And it's not. It doesn't. They don't exactly. give a shit about you. They're just using you to put down people that they feel are further from. Uh, their proximity to whiteness, you know? So like, exactly. it's, it's all just a ploy. They don't actually care about you. They don't actually give a shit about the safety of Jewish people. As you know, Christian Zionists are trying to get all of uh, the Jewish people into the Holy Land so that mm -hmm. Christ can come back. And then it's, it'll be the end of days. It's not going to be a good time for Jewish people. That is that's not going to be. No, it's like the Bible the, these time. are the people. They want the apocalypse to happen. Yeah. And they're it's using so you for it. It's so nuts. The number of people that are like, oh, you know what? I want the apocalypse to happen while I'm alive. Why, bitch? Like, <laughs> why is that something that not, you're going for? Not me. No, no. thank you. What? Uh. They're opening up a quick check 10 minutes from me. Why would <laughs> I want the apocalypse now? Have cheap gas. Do you know the amount of things that I can buy off the internet? I don't want the apocalypse to come, please. And I think some might important. argue, is the apocalypse not here already? Is this not the apocalypse? Ooh. It does. It does kind of feel apocalypsey. <laughs> it's at least apocalypse adjacent. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, like well, don't fall for it, guys. Don't <laughs> If if a if a white man without windows comes up to you and says, "Hey, you want to sit with me in a hearing in Congress and go after people that kind of scare you a little bit, you could have a lot of power." Don't mm -hmm. get in that van. Do it's not. not good for you. Mm -mm. Nope. No. Can I just say though? What? And I haven't said this to you. I haven't said this to you offline, and I would never say this to you offline. I'd never say this to you in real life. I'm only saying this to you so I can look at your reaction right now. I am really fucking proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Yeah, do. <laughs> uh, I really am because here's Ew. the thing. <laughs> oh, we're gonna we're gonna go deeper. <laughs> We've talked about it here. We've talked about how bad we feel. We've talked about. Offline about how bad we feel. This is what I know, you know, every Muslim person is having some version of this conversation with their with their families. I imagine every Jewish person is having some version of this conversation with their families. I think anybody that is at all invested in the future of the world is having this conversation um, internally. And I think 
um, you know, the, the, the thing that we all keep going back to is how sad we are about this because it is, it is fucking heartbreaking that this shit is happening. Right. Um, and what you can do with all that heartbreak and anger is just kind of sit in it and just keep getting angrier and, and, and angrier at the other side. Um, or what you can do is you can go out there and you can try to do a thing and you and your socialist compatriots have like we'll call going, ourselves comrades actually comrades sorry <laughs> you and your comrades have been going out there and you're making an effort like the mayor didn't just pick up your phone call just because just because she's answering her phone call she's she answered her phone call because or she answered your phone call because of all the effort that you guys put in and um that's really really uh good and impressive and and i'm really proud of you and i hope i hope my tone is as condescending as uh, <laughs> as i intended to be good job can you, toots can you can you add in there <laughs> stuff like yeah you know it's not like you've got a family to raise or like a job to do i guess your husband is watching your children while you're out there doing all this stuff well you buried a beta man uh which is the reason why you <laughs> A beta man. I'm joking. That guy I married is a beta more fish. Okay. Yeah, you did. <laughs> I uh, did. But no, it, that that's also that's all part of it, right? Like, I'm sure him being the father and the husband that he is also helps you, which is ultimately, I think, really the reason how it all happened because you have a strong man <laughs> behind you. That's all you really need. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man, take a page from my book, guys. If you feel sad and frustrated with your community because they feel like you feel like they're not doing much, go meet with the mayor. I didn't know that mm-hmm. meeting with the mayor was this easy and small. Obviously, if you live in New York City, don't try to meet with fucking Eric Adams. It'll be a waste of your time. But uh-huh. like, <laughs> no, not a good guy, that one. Um, but like, you know, anywhere else, councilmen, council presidents, council women, council people. Like what was George them? Santos? He was a, a congressman. congressman. Yeah, he was a congressman. <laughs> what did you say? Council women? Uh, it's like they allow women to, to do that. <laughs> All right. That's enough. Anyway, mm-hmm. what is this thing you wrote down? The new prince of New Jersey? That's right, baby. Oh. It's Tommy DeVito. Touchdown Tommy. Tommy Cutlets. I don't know what you're saying. Tell me more. You know, Tom. So the new quarterback for the New York Giants is this kid named Tommy DeVito from New Jersey. Okay. He was undrafted. He went to Syracuse. He he uh, grew up in New Jersey. He went to Don Bosco Prep. Very, very New Jersey kid. Um, he went to Syracuse, didn't get drafted, got picked up by the Giants uh, in the offseason. And then the Giants had a bunch of injuries, so they had to put him in there, right? And now he has started, I think, the last three games for them. And mm-hmm. he's doing wonderful now, the best part about Tommy DeVito is that he proudly lives at home. And he <laughs> says he likes he likes living at home because his mom makes good chicken cutlets. Oh my that God. is why his name is Tommy Cutlets, right? Um, so all this stuff is happening and like people are getting pretty excited. But on Monday uh, Monday night, the Giants played a Monday night football game, right? So it was the biggest Tom it was the biggest game that he's ever played in. And you know, the story has been picking up and he's like the New Jersey guy. His dad is a plumber. No, perfect, perfect casting. Um, uh, his mom does his laundry. And then his agent showed up. Look up Tommy DeVito agent right now. <laughs> Wait, I'm so excited. By the way, Tommy DeVito, he's a local boy. He lives not far from me. Yeah, I think he's like Livingston or something, right? Yeah, he is. I yeah, think I right should here. go and pay him a visit. I'm sure he yeah, goes cool. to the same Trader Joe's as me. Some chicken cutlets. Okay, well, I think Tommy DeVito. Is what is it? Manager, agent, agent, agent. Okay, let's look see at his. Look again. at how his agent dressed up for Monday Night Football. Huh? Oh my god! <laughs> Why is he dressed like he's in like a costume for a mobster? Yeah, that's just apparently how he dresses up. Oh my god! That okay? Not this is an audio medium. This man is dressed in a pinstripe black suit with a black turtleneck and a fedora. Yeah, and he's not an old man. No, he's a young guy. That's just how he dresses up. But I thought I thought before that maybe he got dressed up because the story's so big. No, apparently that's just how he dresses all the time. Wow! And his Tommy DeVito's touchdown celebration. What would you call this move? This Italian gesture. Oh, this move is yeah. as uh, what is it? 
<laughs> like that's what that's the noise I make. That's it's where you put what you put your fingers together in a beak, yeah. and then you you just yeah. wave them at each other. Yeah. I feel like it's offensive because we're not even Italian, but we are from that, New Jersey. We are from New Jersey, and that is his touchdown celebration. <laughs> No. Yeah, so after he scores a touchdown, he goes like this, and then they oh. show his fucking family in the crowd, and they're all doing the same thing. It's amazing. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Now, yeah. you know I'm not allowed to like the Giants. I think your husband loves Tommy DeVito because they are not in any way threatening to the Eagles, although they do have two games coming up, and your husband is worried about the Eagles' uh, record. They've been doing very poorly. <laughs> great. <laughs> Um, although it's not, you know, they won a lot of games in a row that they probably shouldn't have won. It's good to have some losses because you get to regroup and stuff like that. Okay. The 49ers lost three games in a row at some point, but then they had a bye week and they got their shit together. So okay. I feel like the Eagles, their last four games shouldn't be too hard. So it could be exactly what they need. Okay. Well, I'm excited. I this Tommy DeVito guy. Now they call him Tommy Cutlets. Okay, adorable. By the way, there's pictures of him at the shore, and I'm like, of course. Like he's just, of course, he's like he, just it, he goes to DJs and like he is course. so New Jersey. It's awesome. It's also like he's born in 1998 and like Livingston. Like it's just this is so, yeah. oh, how adorable. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. He's he's the, definitely the prince of New Jersey. Yep. Move over, Joe Jonas. <laughs> we are done with him. We are done. Besides, I don't think that he's the prince of New Jersey. If anybody is the prince of New Jersey, it's obviously, I don't even think it's Kevin. I think Kevin is like, what's not the prince, but like the prince's friend? <laughs> I don't know. Does somebody in the court? Yeah. Like one of the yeah. courtsmen. The courtsmen. Yeah. Um, anyway, what else is going on in sports? Uh, you uh, recall we spoke about Shohei Otani at some point. Yeah, super hot, a giant. Yes. Shohei Otani signed the biggest contract in the history of sports. Of all week. sports? Now, I know that baseball uh, players get paid a lot of money. They do get paid a lot of money. They're the most well-paid. Mm-hmm. Usually. Okay. okay, can I guess? Yes. Okay. Okay, prior to this, what were some of the high, higher the numbers? Highest, the, 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 uh, prior to this, the highest baseball contract was, I believe, 12 years, $450 million Okay. Does that mean $450 million a year? No, no. $450 million overall. So it comes out to like $38 million a year or something. Oh, that's it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, $450 million. Okay, uh, carry the one for inflation. <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm gonna say mm, seven fifty. Oh God, you ruined it. Yeah, seven hundred. Wow, seven hundred no. million for ten years. So oh my he's, God, he's seventy million a year. Seventy million a year. Now the interesting thing is he is deferring sixty eight million of that every year. So he's, you know, he's only going to get $2 million from the Dodgers. The rest of it goes into an escrow account. And what he's saying is that once in 10 years when my contract is up, I will collect the rest of this money later. Because the way baseball contracts work is you can do that. And so the team takes on less money initially. Um, they have to pay less money. And that opens up their payroll so they can, ha so they can um, you know, bring on other good free agents and stuff. So it's going to help out the, the, the team sign better players as well. Wow. That, 700 million for 10 years. Is he single? He is very single. Um, I believe. Should I leave my husband? I know he's in Los Angeles. You could, oh, I guess. No, I don't want to leave out. That. I don't want to go out there. Does 700 million over 10 years. Does that number, how, how do you feel when you hear that? Are you just happy? Are you like, that's a waste? That feels like that money could be better spent elsewhere? Um, I mean, th that is a lot of money. It is shocking sometimes when you hear numbers like that because you're like, people are starving. Children are starving mm -hmm. in this country, yeah. right? So I don't, because now we're getting serious about like, why are we spending money? But when you ask yeah. me, how does $700 million make me feel? Obviously, I asked you if he's single. So <laughs> pretty great. Um, 
Nah, I don't know, man. It's like sports is like that, though. Like, I try not to think about like sports and actors and like, obviously not like actors in the actor strike, but like the like the A-list actors, Mm -hmm. these fucking influencers, like people on TikTok, if your video gets a million views, you get like $3,000 in a week. Like Mm -hmm. it's the way that people make money nowadays, it enrages me. But also it's like if there are more avenues for people to make money and and get rich because that's the only way you can do like anything in this world, I guess that's yeah. fine. But ugh, $700 million is a lot of money. It is a lot of money. So I, you know, obviously I think of sports in a different light than a fucking TikToker, right? Which I think, you know, um, if a TikToker is making $3,000 a month just by being a horrible person, do I love that? No. Do I love that the Kardashians are all like billionaires? No, right? Like obviously that money could be better spent elsewhere. Sports is different to me because I think the athletes, it it requires a lot out of you. Oh no, the sure. Is, is like, There's like an actual skill there. Exactly. And then also like they're getting paid that money because they are also generating so much money. For the franchises and the owners and stuff like that, right? So if we're going to be talking about like the stupid amounts of money in sports, because it is seven hundred million to play a sport is a stupid amount of money, right? That doesn't make sense. Like how the world works, that probably shouldn't happen. The fact of the matter is that money is being generated. Somebody is making that money. If we're going to be taking that money away from anybody, it's not the fucking athletes. Right. Yeah. It should be the owners and stuff. Like yeah. Because now I'm thinking about it and I'm like, if the player is making seven hundred million dollars. Exactly. How much money do the owners make of these teams? The player is one of 25 people. Right. So like now is everyone making seven hundred million? No. But everyone is averaging what five million dollars. You if you are employing 25 people that are making five to ten million dollars a year every year. Just imagine how much money you have. Like you are their boss. That's insanity. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Wow. That makes me feel very poor. I'm not. It doesn't. You know, I I never get like when I look at that. Obviously, I'd love to have all that money. But at the same time, how much better do you think your life would be if you had $700 million? (laughs) Real, real, please. (laughs) So are you kidding me? Okay, here's the thing. I don't want to work. If <laughs> I am I don't I think that if all of us like Arthi said this to me when I recorded with her last, she said, if we all could, uh, don't you think the world would be so much better if we didn't have to work to live? Like if we could do other things just to make the world a better place. Look, maybe I've been spending too much time with my socialist friends, but I'm just yeah, saying, like, you know. I just think that the world would be a better place if we all didn't have to work all the time to make money or if the world was more affordable for like the amount of work we put in. Because I feel like we are at a point in the world where it's like, I sometimes think to myself, I can't believe I make the money that I make. Like I'm very grateful for it. Like my job, my husband's job, like the lifestyle that we have. I think we're very lucky. We're very hardworking. But it's crazy to me because I thought that when I was like 15, I thought the people that made the amount of money that I make were like good to retire for the rest of their life and like live mm-hmm. very luxuriously. But the reality yeah. is that that is just like not the situation anymore. And I think that that is, it's like disheartening to think about that. Now, the other day I was talking to Tom and Kicks Hamlet about, <laughs> I would like to propose this to you. Okay. Okay. If you are married to a really rich person. Mm-hmm. Can they buy your uh, love if they cheat on you? <laughs> like if they um, cheat on you, but then you get an Aston Martin. Are you cool with that? I don't think I am. Because, I mean, obviously that happens all the time, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That yeah, happens. Yeah, yeah. And you don't have to be a really rich person. You just have to be the sole uh, like breadwinner. Yeah. Essentially, like people cheat on their spouses all the time because they just think that they're entitled to it. Um, I don't think that there's any like I would just not stay in the marriage. Like, what is the point? Like, 
because the one thing that they're definitely not buying is my love. Now, could no, they buy? Just like, yeah, but could would you stay in the arrangement? <laughs> it depends. It depends if I have kids and stuff like that, right? If let's say if the person is completely open with me and says that, hey, I need to go and I need to do this, um, but your life would be easier if we're married. And I'm also giving you your freedom. I, I guess essentially I just want an open marriage at that point, right? Yeah. I I don't know, man. It, it, they're definitely not getting my love for the money. You don't, want a, you don't want a marriage of convenience and money? You don't want to be in an arrangement? Let me tell you something. I have been very happily married, as you know. My husband is lovely. Uh-huh. Love him to death. Yeah. A beta fish, man. Like, <laughs> so nice. So handsome, so funny. I've married for love, okay? Yeah. I will stay with this man for the rest of my life. However, if I find myself without him, we are no longer marrying. First of all, we're not getting married. I'm not getting married again. But if I was to get married again, it would certainly not be for love this time. I think I would marry somebody for money. Really? <laughs> That's so sad. <laughs> As an unmarried person, that's what because like I could go, I could sell my ass right now for if, I, if that's just what we want. No, right? no, I have the like. This is wonderful. I just don't want to have to find this somewhere again, and I also don't want to have to work. So it's just you just don't want to work. I just don't want to work. I'm just so tired of it. Why? Why are you putting like the poor marriage like in the middle there? You don't have to like napalm your marriage just so you don't want. Just fucking take a couple of weeks off. Use up your PTO. <laughs> poor guy, he's gonna have to listen to this. <laughs> no, I'm sure he uh, agrees. <laughs> no, I think that guy married. If there was a okay, I'm telling you something. Promote. If there was a castaway situation where I thought he was gone, and then mm-hmm. I got married for money, yeah. And then he came back and he saw how rich I was. He'd be like, this is great. So I'm so happy for you. <laughs> well, if it was a castaway situation, the first thing you would do is you two FedEx. Right? <laughs> no, of your money right there. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Ugh, I'm, I'm itching to sue somebody for money. And nothing <laughs> happens to me where I can sue anybody for money. Hey, Crystal, did you get that license plate? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, just some programming updates. Oh. Hey, can I get you to watch more Housewives? Uh, um, of They're course doing another can. Ultimate Girls Trip. It mm. just released on Peacock. It's all of the New York ladies. Is Bethany on it? No. All right, good. I'll watch it then. But it does have Kristen Takeman, who's who left the show. Because she wouldn't talk about the fact that her husband was on Ashley Madison. Oh, I didn't know that. Kristen so Tegman, if I, I do, yeah. I think I remember. Let me know if this is right. Tall blonde lady. Yeah. Modelish. Yeah. Her husband. Yeah. Did he like wearing backwards hats all the time? And you were like, I don't know what that guy does for money. I don't trust it. Yeah. That's actually every husband on Housewife. But yeah. Yeah. He was yeah. on Ashley Madison. So... It's they're basically redoing Scary Island, sort of. So it's um, unfortunately Ramona, Luann, your favorite, Sonia, your other favorite, yep, uh, Dorinda, your other favorite. I'm in. I'm in. Kristen Takeman you know and Kelly Ben Simone. Ah, oh, you know, <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> Kelly gets the blood so, pumping. Um, I always uh, thought, yeah, yeah. she does. Um, okay. Kristen Takeman, I felt that she was wasted in that one season because I did, I do remember watching yeah. some of that, and it just felt yeah. like she was always in the background and she never found her spot because she was yeah. like, I think she was trying to be funny, but maybe she didn't have the personality for it, or maybe it just didn't work out. Yeah, she was All the right. one that, um, she was there when Luann was like, I think she was there this season when Luann got yelled at, and then she said, Be cool, don't be uncool. I think she was there at that trip, maybe, yeah. Maybe. Anyway, so those are out on Peacock. They did drop three episodes at a time. I may not force you to watch all three, but would you watch one and recap one with me next week? I will do that. Okay, for Christmas. Oh, that's what Jesus would have wanted. That's what it did. Also, we're going to watch The Crown. Yeah. We're not going to do a, a episode by episode recap, I think. Let's just do... Mm-hmm. 
the whole bunch. Did all of it come out already? I think so. Doesn't it all come out at once? No, they were they did it in parts because of, you know, the Diana of it all. Oh. Yeah. They want reactions every week? Yeah. Yeah, so they did like partial episodes. And then also you haven't watched May December yet. I have not. I have a you're lot gonna of thoughts. Lo- you're going to love that movie. <laughs> what does that mean? You're going to love it. There's so much it to gonna, discuss. Is it going to ruin me? No. It's going to okay. it's going to it's going to really rock your world. It's a very good movie. So our friend Donnie and our friend Sonia both said that they would like to come on and talk about it. So I think that you should watch me December and we should try to watch that and release that for week of Christmas also. So okay. there's some I'll watch Christmas content week. coming up. And then oh. we thought about talking about a Christmas time movie and we said, what's a holiday time movie that we could talk about? And you said while you were sleeping. And I was like, yes, because that's like, first of all, I think it's one of the first rom-coms, American rom-coms that I ever watched. Yeah, I I had no concept of it before. Yeah, so we're going to maybe watch that. So that's that's all the stuff that's coming up. And then so maybe there might be a short break from like Bravo Bravo for a little bit for the week of Christmas. And then we'll come back to regular programming when regular shows are back on. Fantastic. Hey, did you know that Kyle Richards is potentially uh, getting a divorce from her husband because she's sleeping with a woman? I think you told me that. Yes. Okay, great. All right. I just wasn't sure. I wanted to keep you abreast. They might have be having open sex. Abreast because they're two women? Fuck you, dude. <laughs>